So this is a really quick recap of moments in 2D with a couple of problems for you to do and then I'll work through them. So just as a really quick reminder, a moment is a turning force and the equation for moment is force times distance. But there's quite a few caveats here. It's the distance to the pivot and either the force or the distance have to be perpendicular to the pivot. So you can write it as the perpendicular force times the distance or the force times the perpendicular distance. And usually in many problems, you don't really have to worry about that because they are already perpendicular. But there are some problems where that's not the case. We have to add in angles and that happens especially at A level, which is what this video is for. We also need to remember the principle of moments. And the principle of moments is that for an object in equilibrium, which means that it is either stationary or moving at a constant velocity, the anti-clockwise moments and I'm going to add in this here, the sum of anti-clockwise moments equals the sum of clockwise moments. And that's all I'm going to do for review in terms of theory. Um, if you need more help on that, go and look at some previous videos about moments in 1D or moments at GCSE, because I want to focus on the slightly harder problems. So here is a moments in 1D problem. Um, and generally, you find that you've got a situation that's in equilibrium and there's a missing thing. So here, I've got a missing distance with lots of forces acting on a seesaw. And the seesaw is useful because it's got a pivot here. Now, to work out what this missing thing is, I'm going to apply the principle of moments. And you often see that someone will do this. And that means taking moments around whatever point. I'm going to write the pivot. But it could be that you've got a letter, so it could be taking point, uh, moments around point A. Um, the sum of anti-clock, is how I usually write it, equals the sum of clock. Because I'm lazy and don't want to write the entire thing out. So now I'm going to go through each of these um, forces and decide if the moment is clockwise or anti-clockwise. So starting off with two newtons here. Now, this is a bit of a funny case. Remember it was the perpendicular force times distance or the force times perpendicular distance. The line of action between the pivot and this force here is this way, and that force is parallel to that. So this doesn't actually have any bearing on our moments because we've got to have things that are perpendicular to the line of action from the pivot. So these three here will count. So I can ignore that. This, if I think about it, it's pushing down this way. This is anti-clockwise. This is also anti-clockwise because it's going up that way. And then this one here is going around there. This is clockwise. So now I need to think about each of these moments in terms. So the anti-clockwise moments, I've got to start with three newtons times two meters, plus the blue one, which is one newton times one meter, which is equal to this distance here, now this distance is one plus, let's call this x, multiplied by the force, which is 1.5. So I've set up my problem, and now I'm gonna have a go and just fill in the numbers. So three times two is six, plus one equals 1.5 plus 1.5x. I've just expanded that bracket. I'm gonna move down here, so I get seven, minus 1.5 equals 1.5x. 7 minus 1.5 is 5.5 equals 1.5x. 5.5 divided by 1.5 equals, I should be able to do this in my head. I'm gonna use the calculator, because I've not done these problems before. I've made them up and not checked them. So we're gonna hope they work. Equals 3.6 reoccurring. So I'm gonna round that to 3.67 meters. And there is my answer. So that is a standard moments problem, um, not in 2D. We're now gonna move on to some 2D problems. Um, what you can do, if you want to, is you can pause the video, have a go at the problem, and then listen to me explain it. So feel free to do that. Maybe you want to listen to me to explain the first one, and then you'll pause for the next couple. So exactly the same thing's gonna happen here. We're gonna take moments around the pivot, and we're gonna say that the sum of anti-clock 
equals the sum of clock. Um, but there's only two forces here to make life a little bit easier, but this one is at an angle. So this force here is pulling it around this way, so that is going to be anti-clockwise. And this one here is kind of pulling it that way, so it's mainly clockwise. Now the anti-clockwise moment is pretty easy. It's just F times two meters, because that is perpendicular. So two F equals, the clockwise moment is harder. This force is not perpendicular to the line of action to this bench here, but we can split it into two forces like so. We can split it into this and this. Now, if this angle here is 60, that means that the size of this perpendicular force, the perpendicular force here, equals five newtons times the sine of 60. Because if you're taught by me, you know that I say, if it's not touching the angle, it's not cozy to the angle. So it's not cos, it's single, it's sine. And also we could also work out, because we could write the second force here if we wanted to, this would be this parallel force is equal to five cos 60. But we don't care about that because that is parallel. We only care about the perpendicular force. So now I can write that the force at um, the moment is force times distance, so it's 5 sine 60 times 1.5. And be careful, often when people do this step, they think they've done everything and they forget to then multiply it by the distance. So we can put some numbers in there. So 5 sine 60 times 1.5 equals, a lovely number there, uh, 6.49519 carrying on. That's equal to 2f. Therefore, F is that divided by two. And if I do that, I get that F is 3.25 Newtons if I round it to three significant figures. Okay, next problem, a little bit harder because I've added some more angles in. Um, and also I've moved the pivot to this point here. So I'm gonna get you to press pause, have a go at the problem, see what you can do. And when you're either finished or really stuck, press play and we'll carry on. Okay, so I'm going to take moments once again around the pivot. And once again, it's the sum of anti-clock equals the sum of clock. And it's always good to write this because it shows that you're using the principle of moments and you know it, even if you get things wrong. So if this is the pivot, these two forces, the down forces, are trying to pull this around clockwise. So this is a clockwise force and this is a clockwise force, whereas this is pulling it upwards, so this is anti-clock. So once again, my anti-clock is easier. So my anti-clockwise moment's going to be 80 times 4 plus 3, which is 7 centimetres. Now, as this is all in centimetres, I can keep those distances in centimetres, so I don't need to change them into metres. Uh, but these two forces, both of them, I need to resolve into perpendicular and parallel moments, well, really just the, it's just the perpendicular side. So I care about this bit of the force, the perpendicular part of the force, and this will be 100 sine 50. So the perpendicular force here is 100 sine 50. And then down here, you can see that this is a much more horizontal force, even though it's um, diagonal. Um, so this one here would be F sine 10. The perpendicular force here would be F sine 10 because it's not cosy to the angle. I can ignore the parallel forces. They'd be 100 cos and F cos 50 and 10 respectively, but I can ignore those because I don't care about them. So I'm going to add those into my problem. So the force is 100 sine 50 times the distance, and the distance for the green one is 4 centimetres, plus the force I care about here is F sine 10, and the distance here is 4 plus 3 plus 3, which is 10, but to keep it with how I've done the rest of it, I'll write it like this. So we've got 80 times 7 equals 400 sine 50 plus 10 F sine 10. And I just need to put my numbers in now. So I'm going to skip down to here. I'm really not the world's best mathematician because I don't have to do it very often. So 560 is 8 times, 80 times 7. 400 sine 50. Oh, no. 400 sine 50 is 306.417 carrying on um, plus 10 sine 10 is 
1.73648 times F. This is actually one place where I do often not rearrange first. I often do each of these terms so I can add and subtract them. So now 560 minus 306.417 equals 1.73648F. So that's why I've written so many decimal places so I can keep some accuracy here. So I've got 253.583 divided by 1.73648 equals F. So let's divide that now. 1.73648 equals 146. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, newtons, which seems sensible. We've got 100 newtons here, 80 newtons here. It doesn't seem outside the realms of possibility. Okay, final problem. Lots and lots and lots of them. Press pause, see what you can do, and then when you're ready to go through it, press play. Okay, doke. So once again, I'm going to say taking moments around the pivot, and I'm going to say that the sum of anticlock equals the sum of clock. And the reason I do anti-clock first is because to me, going this way makes more sense on the left and going that way makes more sense on the right. Um, but there's lots of different ones here, so I'm gonna identify them all. So this one is going clockwise. This one is anti-clockwise. This one is also anti-clockwise overall. And this one would be clockwise. So let's split each of these forces up. So this force here, I've made it a little bit different here. You might think it's always sine. It is if they give you this angle, but here I've given the angle to the perpendicular. So this would be four cos 70. Five newtons is fine, because that's already perpendicular. Here, I care about this part of the force, the perpendicular part of the force. And this would be F sine 60, back to that rule over there. And then this is six, so that's fine. So I've got anti-clockwise first, I'm going to do 5 times 2, plus, this is anti-clockwise, this is F sine 60, times 1.5. And that equals the clockwise, here's my first clockwise, which is 4 cos 70 times 2.5, plus 6 times 1.5, 2.5. So then I put the numbers in, so 10 plus 1.5 F sine 60 equals, I can do this number, 4 cos 70, oh no, what have I written there, 4 cos 70 times 2.5, 3.420201, one. carrying on, plus 6 times 2.5, it's too early, I'm doing this at 7am, which is 15. Okay, so now let's try and collapse all those together down here. So 1.5F sine 60 equals 3.420201 plus 15 minus 10. So that is 3.420201 3 plus 15 minus 10. 8.420201. And F will be that divided by 1.5 times sine 60. Hang on, I'll just do it this way because I, I know this will work. I'm very um, specific about how I do my calculations. And there we get that F equals 6.48 newtons, which once again seems pretty sensible. So that is some base, well, not that basic, they're quite hard problems, but some non-exam problems about the mechanics of how to do those um, 2D momentum problems. What I'd recommend now is going on to find some exam questions and see if you can apply the theory to those.